You're hanging out in the House of Sunny podcast, where it's always sunny, mostly because of your host, comedian and YouTuber, Sunny Loman. Want to know what Sunny and her friends are thinking about this week? Well, here she is, Sunny Loman. Hey, welcome everybody. We have so much good juicy news this week, so we're just going to go over that. The news this week is really gossipy, kind of. I like that. Don't you think? It's crazy. Crazy town. It's crazy town this week, but it's like none of it is substantive. It's all just like (laughs) gossipy, you know, none of it matters. There is some substantive takeaway, though, that I think we probably both agree with, but the news itself is all like I'm more (laughs) concerned about the potholes and the road by my office right. than I am about any of this shit. But I know, right? So, but yeah, it's it's gossipy news. It's it's drama queen news. It's mostly cultural news. It's not really politics or news news. Like you know, nobody got bombed this week, as far as I as far as I know. Yeah, as far as we well, they they could have, but the mainstream media wouldn't cover it because Stormy Daniels and Colin. Ka- Kaepernick and Trump are more important. Right, right. Okay, so we've got Nike news. We're going to talk White House insider drama. Stay tuned. But first, jokes. And I'm here with with Sidekick Doug, obviously. You heard him already. Let's see. Let me bring up the voicemail. We have one joke on the voicemail. It's our typical... This is the joke man. The House of Sunny joke man. Mm -hmm. Joke guy. An uh, older man was visiting his daughter one evening and asked her, asked her if he could borrow the newspaper. She said, it's a 21st century, Dad. We don't use uh, newspapers. Here, use my iPad. The fly never knew what hit him. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That is good. That is good. Well yep. done, joke guy. Yeah, all right. Good job. Hey, if you want to call in a joke for next week, the number seven zero seven six eight one. 5A34, and we will play it whether it's dirty or racist because we play them all. We like all jokes. We don't censor jokes. Correct. All right. We prefer dirty jokes. Why? Well, I, I don't know if prefer. <laughs> what? Do we prefer dirty jokes? You might hey, prefer this, dirty this jokes. This is how I get my excitement every week. You well, know, that's sad. Jokes. That's really sad. Okay, I'm having a I'm having a really tough week. By the way, personally, my my life is so chaotic, and my daughter's sick, and you can hear I'm sick. It was first week of school. I know you went through that also, Doug. First week of school. Yeah, it's brutal. Everybody's getting up earlier. Um, well, in my case, uh, Lucia got a cold, so she didn't even go to her first week of school. But I'm running around because I'm in California, so they have forced vaccinations here. So I'm running around getting documents and. Then it turns out the doctor wouldn't sign the document because she hasn't had a physical within a year. So then I had to schedule a doc, a, an, you know, a last minute physical for my daughter, and I'm shuttling her around, and she's sick, and I'm sick. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, just so she can start school. Well, you're a bad parent, is what this, what you're confessing to. You're saying I should have been prepared for this. Yeah. Well, I'm saying you should have prepared. I'm saying your children are sick. You're sick. You know, you're waiting to the last minute. I, I think I need to, I need to intervene. Well, then the, again, I do that. Every parent does the same thing, like getting school supplies. Uh, Try yeah. go trying to go get school supplies like 48 hours before school starts, and you walk into the store and there's like they're out. One, one piece of <laughs> there's a pencil loose left. paper and a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> There's a pencil left. That's like me on, um, you know, Halloween. Ha- uh, Halloween and Easter. Like Easter, exactly. the last minute trying to get her an Easter basket. There's none left. It's yeah. I, like why can't I go like two hours before Halloween and just there should be like 800 boxes of candy here for me. I know like, this is but, unfair. But the stores have figured it out. Like they screw the last minute shopper for sure, so that they well, make sure true. they don't have excess inventory. Exactly. And yeah, no, it's. I'm actually, the mistake I made was I scheduled a family vacation for two weeks right before the first week of school. Horrible. That was really dumb. I yeah. And I didn't know that because I've never done that before. And now I know that. I will never do that again because we were out of town when I should have been doing all that prep work. Yeah. We had a good yeah, time, well, you, though. 
you're getting into the little kids getting into real school situation now where yeah. when you have a real little one it doesn't matter if right. you have a really old one it doesn't matter but when you go through these like middle ages you got to you got to spend like six weeks preparing for the beginning of school. Oh, my God. Clothes, well, they grow so fast, so the you other do thing stuff. That, the other thing that happened was mid-July, the school she was enrolled in imploded. The school imploded. had been around for 21 years, and the head of school just said, I can't do this anymore. I'm closing the school. Oh. Yeah. So... Imagine that her. parents, you know, your, your, da- your daughter's enrolled in a private preschool and the preschool closes. And you know how it is. You have to book these things six months in advance. Of like they course. don't have nice to give you some warning. I know. No warning. The teachers are fired. The kids are all with like no school to go to. <laughs> it's ho- last that's minute. horrible. It is horrible. You yeah. can't do that. I know. I mean, if she had some inkling, she was going to quit they you got to announce that a year in advance you know? i know it was terrible so the parents have cobbled together some sort of co-op classroom and i just decided that's not this good enough it's yeah, not this doesn't sound good it's not good it's like a 10 kids same teacher i didn't love the teacher anyway the teacher we loved when i first enrolled her retired and we got basically a dragon lady i don't know how a dragon lady is attracted to a montessori a philosophy. A dragon lady? Yeah, you know, like that strict Asian. Oh, no, uh, I like that. Perfectionist. That's kind of hot. Well, you might like that in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I like that but around te- the house. Teaching your kid, it's like, you know, oh no, you missed a step in the 25 step activity yeah. rule book. What's wrong you got to You got to go back and do it over. Like, See, you're from the wussy world of it's okay, honey. Just try again. Now you need you need. To, I mean, that's why these. Why do you think these Asian kids score so good on these tests? I mean, I don't really care. I don't want her to score well on tests and be a miserable person. That's uh, kind of where I'm at with that. But yeah, yeah. you know, so she's she's really passionate about, about Montessori because she realizes that this woman has psychological problems. First of all, every time you talk to her, she's in tears. Because she's so psychologically damaged from her dragon lady upbringing. <laughs> Come on. I'm not kidding. She's in tears? She's like yeah. weeping? Yeah, About she what? cries a lot. She's just damaged, you know? And um, I had a... a kind Have of you a... noticed that a lot of people are crying and weeping when they talk to you specifically? It maybe. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Jeez. There seems are you to be saying a lot of I stories. made her cry over and over? People at stores and coffee shops, they're always in tears after you leave, but you just you just assume they're damaged. Come on. You're I am just this world view where everybody has psychological face. problems and it's really me. Yeah. You're just blowing up on everyone. You're on a prednisone rage. You know, that's partly true. So like last year, the first day of school or second day of school or something, I got into an argument with her. And I was on so much prednisone. And so my daughter was climbing a fence. She wasn't supposed to climb. And this Montessori teacher, Montessori is supposed to be like, you let the kids kind of, you don't rush kids and you don't interfere. You, you kind of let them be independent and do for themselves. So like if she needs to get off that fence, she needs to figure out how to get down. You don't go snatch her up and get her down. That's kind of dangerous, though. It's a little but... dangerous, but you know you're there. But you're if you feel like they can do it, you okay. You how stand high back. was she? Are we talking like she was like twelve feet this, in the air? This and wasn't you were like just just let her figure it no, out. No, no, this wasn't it's dangerous fine. at all. The, okay, she could okay. do it, but and I could see the wheels turning. She was just thinking, okay, where do I put my foot? You know, she was going through that process, and and her name's <laughs> Miss. Like, feet on the ground, feet on the ground, feet on the ground. Like, rushing her. And so she just tossed herself off the fence. <laughs> oh. And that's when she got hurt, okay? So then I'm like, uh, don't, you know, don't rush her. Or I said something like, don't rush her. And she said, I wasn't rushing. She got defensive. I wasn't rushing her, blah, 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 blah. And I, I like, in my predroid rage, probably snapped at her, you know? Probably. I definitely snapped at her. <laughs> I love the red. I probably <laughs> punched her in the face. I, I might mean, have slapped her. <laughs> I, I might have, I might have gut punched her, but maybe. Yeah. So anyway, uh, 
we, we had this little kind of controversy and it, it ended with, I just had to walk away because I, I could feel that I wasn't able to handle it, you know? And that's what I've done a lot on prednisone is just avoid conflict because I can't actually stay calm. And so I just walk away. I just picked Lucia up and I just kind of walked away across the parking lot and then walked back and started the process of getting her in the gate, you know, again. And anyway, because of this conflict, the head of school said it decided that I should have a meeting with Miss. We should clear the air. And I'm like, great, let's do that. So I'm, I go to this meeting. It was 30 minutes. Didn't say a word. She cried the entire meeting. She didn't say a word. It was the most awkward, bizarro parent-teacher meeting. Like, I mean, I didn't know, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, that was worse. Now I don't have any confidence in this woman. She's yeah. psychologically damaged, and she can't have a, a conflict and a conversation, you know, yeah. conflict resolution. It was terrible. So yeah. I was, but I had a really rough year with illness and, you know, it's five blocks. You should blocks have punched from... her again. I don't While know what I should down, have done there. for the kill. <laughs> <laughs> Throw punched her. <laughs> yeah, she was already crying, so you had her yeah. in a week. I maybe she was if I if I'd been on my game, I could have gotten her to resign in yeah, that meeting. You, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about winning, do you? Yeah, this is the not. art of the deal. <laughs> apparently, I didn't push for the the win at the end there. <laughs> Okay, so I let it go, you know, and Lucia seemed to be doing okay, although looking back, I can see there were some behavior issues with Lucia and some things happening and things she wasn't really learning that now mm -hmm. I look back and think, eh, it was kind of not a great year for her because I just don't think Miss is that great of a teacher. She's really new. She's passionate about Montessori, but she has these personal hang-ups and this perfectionism and... Um, oh, I'm glad you've named her because now you're... Yeah. Now you can get sued. Good well, job. Sorry. I probably shouldn't have, yeah. But now you can like Google her and probably find her. And and you'll know what school my daughter used to go to. She doesn't yeah, go don't... there anymore, so now you can't find her. <laughs> you need to edit this, but okay. Anyway, so so that's all fine and dandy, but you know, she had the head of school at least as a mentor then, and there was some structure and there was a it was a preschool through junior high school so there were a lot of other kids so the whole thing collapses so then these parents cobble together this little preschool classroom with this dragon lady and 10 kids and I'm like no there's no structure there's no supervision I yanked her so we we're in a new school at the last minute I had to run around getting paperwork so that's partly my excuse but the it other sounds part like is, little house on the prairie a little bit 10 kids in a <laughs> it's kind of like but instead that. of a but you had a dragon lady, so maybe it was... It was a little, it's more like a California prairie story. L little house on the step. Little, little house on the California um, coolie. The desert? Coolie prairie. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So So now you got a new school and everything's fine. This new school is great. Yeah, I love this new school. Um, but yeah, it was just a, a lot of chaos this week. and um, But mostly because I wasn't here. Because I knew she was going to have to be enrolled in this new school when I was up in Minnesota. I just couldn't handle anything. Hey, uh, you know, our kids' school imploded and uh, kids sick. Let's take a vacation. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm sick. Time. No school. <laughs> Time I... to leave the state. Yeah, let's go for two weeks and go to the Minnesota State Fair. Woo! All right. That's worth alligator on a stick. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting parent of the year. Yeah, I can't. Have, it was poor planning. Yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? She, she won't remember it. Nope, she won't. She won't remember it. And I thought she was gonna have like a trauma when I said you can't. You know, you're switching schools because like all her friends go to this school. You know, she's got these little friends in the neighborhood. We're six blocks from the school. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, in your new school, every class has its own kitchen. And she was like, what? Oh my god, I'm so excited. Awesome. She there loves you go. cooking. That was smart. Yeah. Give her the positive. She's super excited, actually, Good. about it. So it's a great class. It's a great school. Anyway, um, let's talk about Colin Kaepernick and the Nike ad. So that Ugh. came out, and you know, there are all, there's the shit. First, there's the do you or do you not agree with Kami Colin? Kami, let's let's give him a Trump nickname. Kami yeah, Kaepernick. Kami 
Yeah, I like that. And he is a commie. He's yep. a he he's a, he's an express. He, I think he's explicit about it. Mm-hmm. So this guy's a, his whole protest is bullshit from start to finish. I'm so tired of this. This I mean, it, it is literal propaganda about the cops pulling over black people because all the statistics disprove this. And yet, you know, everybody believes it. I mean, it's just insane. Or, or well, I should say everybody on the a, left. I mean, let's assume, though, that, you know, these people experience yeah. something. I mean, obviously, it's not universally true that this is not, I mean, this is going on somewhere. There are bad guys. There are bad guys in the yeah, world. There are bad, there there are are bad, bad police officers. There are bad cops, no doubt. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you assume that, oh, I still great. don't agree with with the protest. I I don't agree with the forum. I think it was not clear what he was protesting. So since it was the anthem, it comes across like you're protesting America. Of course. Yeah. And when you wear socks that refer to See? cops as pigs. Yeah. When most cops are good, that's just kind of rubs me the wrong way. You know. Oh, I like beyond that. That's because that's vicious. I mean, it's one thing to say trying to draw attention to something that might be real. It's another thing to then take the next step, which is to generalize about all police right. being bad. And if that doesn't, it actually does create a more dangerous environment for police. And then you have the situation now, thanks Black Lives Matters, they've created this situation where the cops don't work because they can't do their jobs. Yeah. So now you have more crime <laughs> and yeah, more black a, deaths. Yeah, Yay! we know mutually know. We have Good a mutual job. friend that's a police officer that can testify to that. Yeah, so you Kami, know, they just, Kami Kaepernick has actually caused more murder and and robbery and rape because of his protest. Well, just think about the, you know, and then to the forum issue, you know, like let's say you just started going to funerals. You just started showing up at funerals and you interjected in the middle of the eulogy and, you know, gave some impassioned speech about, I don't know, whatever, name name a topic. It's like, okay, maybe you have a point about whatever it is you're concerned about, but this is a funeral. Right. <laughs> this isn't this isn't the place for your oh, but protest. Doug, it's free it's free speech. And, well, but it's not because it's a private, you know, this, you're an employee. So another example would be at every company meeting, you know, you stand up and start talking about um you know, how Jesus died for your sins or something like that. Yeah, it's like, totally okay, inappropriate. You can believe that. That's fine. But this is a business meeting about staplers right. or something. You know, <laughs> this isn't the right forum and right. you're an employee, you know, so it's not just the mess. I mean, the message is bad enough. And I think that's the overriding thing we should focus on is the fact that this guy's a communist and he has an evil message. He does have but an evil message. Yeah. Even to sub- to whatever extent you think that it's even a legitimate message or that there's some truth in it, which there is, you know, this is not the right forum. You know, you're an entertainer. People are paying money to go see you. And, you know, you're taking a minute to honor the country. Okay, great. Let's all stand up and take off our hats and, you know, so even if you really believe, you know, here's a guy that was in the Super Bowl being watched by billions of people. I shouldn't say that maybe a billion or two billion people, but this guy was a Super Bowl quarterback and he's in the NFL making millions of dollars. He has all sorts of opportunities to push this message other than in the one minute when this business, the NFL is trying to honor the country and the fans are all in the country. So it's completely inappropriate. And he's, he's ruining his own message, whatever that is. And then on top of it, he's bad. He's a bad guy. Yeah. And the, and the consequences of his protest are actually death and destruction. So I, this guy's not a hero. And I know some people think he's a hero. So there's like a percentage of people who think he's a hero and but Nike has made a big mistake in catering to those people. He they have lost everybody else because I think it's I think that the people are pretty right to be disgusted and outraged by this guy and what he's created and caused. And um to have a company 
hold him up as a hero. Oh, it's it's really awful. Well, so last night there was a guy, the guy from Barstool Sports was on the news, and he said, you know, as a shareholder of Nike, I like this because Nike isn't really promoting their brand to, you know, old white guys or something. They're promoting their brand to, you know, inner city kids and, you know, people that would really groove on this message. And I'm thinking that's even worse. Yeah. Because not only because you're, you know, selling $200 shoes, you know, to inner city kids and, you know, promoting that concept of, you know, that sort of materialism and that, you know, having this brand makes you good or something. So beyond that, you're you're pushing this message that the police are brutal. They're to be hated that, you know, there is that you're a victim and that, you know, this is what life consists of is, you know, not making yourself better as an individual, but sacrificing uh, yourself to this cause, this police brutality cause, which in turn vilifies the police even more and makes your, community probably more dangerous you're right and i think the the issue of forum and timing is actually important i think that people would be fine with him even though his message is evil i don't think anybody would be freaked out if he as a person you know became an activist in some way Absolutely. Um, so forum is critical and it's it is i think the funeral is a great example it's like the westboro baptist church that goes to these funerals and protests and, and everybody just goes, uh, that's awful. Yes. Even if you agreed with them, there's it's stomach turning. And I feel that way about this protest. And I think a lot of football fans, I'm not a football fan, but a lot of football fans are like, I just want to watch fucking football. <laughs> right. And and the left just keeps squeezing themselves into every fucking aspect of our lives. Yes. You can't shop exactly. at Target anymore without realizing that their transgender bathroom policy is uh, a problem, you know? Yeah, yeah. You Politicize can't watch football. Everything. And all of these corporations are complicit in this. It's driving me freaking crazy. The mm-hmm. NFL did not handle this well. And they let the thing fester and grow for a year, and it got to the point where, remember when that army, that ex-Army Ranger was like, I can't kneel for the anthem, but I'm not going to say anything or do anything. I'm just going to wait in the locker room and come out when this whole protest is over. But I don't want to protest the anthem. And Mm -hmm. he had to apologize for that. Yeah, right, right. So it's not like, oh, Colin Kaepernick has free speech or something. He was forcing that protest on every fucking buddy in the NFL. Yeah, because now now you're now you're. um... Now, if you teammates. don't disrespect the anthem, you're a racist who doesn't care about black people. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. That. So it's America versus black people. That is like what it's set up. And and he does hate America. He's protesting the anthem. Whatever he says about it, that's what he's decided to protest. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like our country. He thinks our country was built on. He's a communist, first of all. So, yeah, he's an enemy of our country. All right, that's enough of that rant. But the corporations are swinging so far left, you, I, my head is spinning. Yeah. I hope Nike, you know, I, I saw a lot of chatter, people saying, oh, Nike knows what it's doing, no bad press, is, you know, all press is good press. Um, ESPN's Ball. ratings are down. Target lost a bunch of sh- market share when it did its whole transgender thing. I can think of other examples where companies have miscalculated on this. But it's funny because they keep doing it. They don't care. They right. no longer care about their fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. They're all out there virtue signaling. And I think one of the reasons is I've noticed at least that in our culture, to become a CEO of a big company, it's a very political job these days because a lot of your job is dealing with politicians. Yeah. And so And the Twitter mobs the kind of people who make it to the top of these companies aren't aren't necessarily the the great people that they used to be. Um, no, I would have said something different about the tech companies because they're not as regulated, but um, all of those people are very left too. And you have that whole nerd jock um, theory about that. <laughs> yeah, and we we I can do. we can talk about that because I, I I've been reading an essay by Ayn Rand, um, altruism and appeasement. 
it kind of talks about the psychology of the liberal and it kind of is like you've got this nerdy guy who's um, and she doesn't use these words at all she's talking about but you're kind of an outcast um, you're really smart and you're teased for that and you're an outcast for that and you end up feeling guilty for your intelligence and you basically virtue signal hmm. so that's kind of an interesting theory. We can talk about that some other time. I want to get through this news, yeah. but I wanted to mention another company that recently uh, came out with, um, uh, this is unbelievable. There's no more American brand than Levi's. Right. American denim giant Levi Strauss and Company announced Tuesday that it is launching a series of new initiatives to benefit groups working to prevent gun violence. Oh, God. They're working with gun control activists. Levi Strauss's CEO and president, Chip, Chip Berg, wrote in Fortune on Tuesday that the company, quote, simply cannot stand by silently while it come, when it comes to issues that threaten the very fabric of the communities where we live and work. Okay, so what are they going to do? Are they going to go and try and stop people from shooting each other in Chicago? Or in the inner cities where 90% of this crime emanates? Quote, of you course may, not. I you, assume... You may wonder why a company that doesn't manufacture or sell guns is wading into this issue, but for us, it's simple, Berg wrote. Americans shouldn't have to live in fear of gun violence. It's an issue that affects all of us, all generations and all walks of life. So we're going to take away all the innocent people guns so that all the criminals can shoot you. Yeah, cause, because we shouldn't have to. Like, we wish yeah. for a world... You know, that's the that's the money statement. Is totally. It, everything on the left is we wish there were no yeah. guns. We wish people didn't kill each other. Um, the fact is, though, that people do kill each people other. Kill you need each to other. protect yourself. You need to protect yourself. If it's not a gun, it's going to be a goddamn knife. But we shouldn't have to. <clears throat> Why? Yeah. Why yeah, shouldn't right. we have to? Right. It would be nice if we didn't have to. I don't live in fear of gun violence. I think gun violence is okay as long as I'm on the right side of that gun violence. Right? Well, the fact is, it's it's very rare, and most gun violence takes place in inner cities. Yeah. In big me metropolitan areas. If you look among at crime criminals. statistics. It, it, you know, the most of, it, exactly, amongst criminals, most, gu most gun deaths are suicide, like something like two-thirds of it. But if you take out the, the, you know, the major metropolitan areas where this gang violence is occurring, you know, New Orleans, Chicago, Baltimore, Detroit, those kinds of places, there's no more gun violence here than anywhere in the world. In fact, it's less. Yeah. So this is a, you know, once again, um, this is a solution seeking a problem. There is no problem. So that's Levi's. I mean, so, the American Gene Company has decided to take a stand against the Second Amendment. <laughs> this is the culture we live in. And people go, uh, why are you supporting Trump? Or why don't you hate Trump? I'm not afraid of Trump. Trump can't do jack shit to me. <laughs> These people I'm afraid of. Mm -hmm. They own everything. And they right. want to tear it down. Yeah, they're not going away. I think there's just a culture of lawlessness. Well, we'll get into that. okay, so we'll get into we're gonna talk some stuff later. Okay, right. next topic. New York Times op ed from this supposed insider, oh. the senior senior administration insider. I've decided he's the senior tour guide of the White House. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's the guy that gives the tours. He's of the, the guy that gives the tours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's his. He manages he's, the tour guides. He's senior, well, he's, or he maybe he's the janitor. You know, while he's sweeping up. He grabs an executive yeah. order and throws it in the garbage. He could be a senior uh, janitor. Absolutely, yeah. I believe that. He may, you know, if the New York Times is like, hey, look, he is a senior employee at the White House. We didn't yeah. lie about that. It just so happens he's a janitor. Correct. But we told you the truth. It could be anybody. There, the New York Times has no credibility with me. There's no question. First of all, they're, they are also communists. So they're enemy. They're our enemy. They're yeah, enemy. Hey, hello, everybody. Communism is an enemy to freedom. Did we forget that? 
they support communism. They just hired a woman who has called for white murder, like murder of whites. Yep. And, and then when they found that out, they're like, yeah, we know. We don't care. We like her. She was a good hire. <laughs> good hire. Well done. And now they've they've printed an anonymous op-ed from an insider talking about Trump. Okay. So I read it. You know, I thought... I thought, first of all, I thought, is that even real? Because um, that just seems like so far-fetched to me <laughs> that an insider would write an op-ed. And, the, you know, the New York Times, like, the fact that the name isn't printed, I just, with the New York Times credibility, the whole thing just stinks. Yeah. And then I read it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is bullshit. This was written by either a progressive or a very far-left Republican. Or a John McCain type Republican. Yeah, a John McCain type Same Republican. Thing. Absolutely. So even just the headline. First of all, he, okay, headline. I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. Okay, the word resistance is a Democrat activist word right yeah, now. Yeah, right. So he's saying I'm part of the resistance and I'm inside the administration, so don't worry, I've got you covered. Yeah, he's virtue signaling. And then subheading is, I work for the president, but like-minded colleagues and I, so he's saying there's a group of us, Cabal. have vowed to thwart parts of his agenda and his, agenda and his worst inclinations. That's an admission of a coup. Right. And this morning, Trump treated, tweeted treason, and he's being poked fun of for that by some objective. I'm sorry. I'm not going to name the names, but excuse me, but that is fucking treason. Yeah. You're inside the White House and you're trying to thwart his, and you're secretly with a group trying to thwart his agenda. He's a democratically elected president. Well, and the irony is that they're accusing Trump of being anti democratic. Right. And here so they are, be, being they a, a the authoritarians that they are. They have a little group yep. of people and we're trying to thwart him inside the White House. Okay. So let's keep in mind this could be the janitor because it could be. I mean, I'm not, I'm literally not, it's kind of a joke, but. That literally could it's be true. It's probably not. It's probably someone who's, you know, in some role. A senior you know, staffer. A um, but sure. But it's not going to be one of the close, you know, it's not going to be Sarah Sanders. But, the, you know, in any company or any organization, I, every, every boss I've ever been around, particularly good ones, have 700 ideas and 698 of them are bad. Or they rant or they rave. Or they go off on tangents. The whole job of a staff is to deal with that, and to, and that's why you have an administration. That's why you have people around you that stop you from acting on your impulses and guide you in certain directions. I mean, this is beyond that, though. This is this person is not saying, you know, if you were, you know, it, and again, anyone who's worked in an organization knows this. You know, you the reason why you have lieutenants and middle managers and senior partners and people around you is you have heated discussions about right. what you should do and about how to and you, you might walk in one day and say, you know what, I just want to fire everyone in this company. I'm so sick of what's going right. on, you know, or I hate my customers. Let's let's get rid of half of our customer base. You know, you just you know whatever. what the best see I, I'm not saying Trump is like a great CEO. I could see that it could not be that way, but. The best CEOs are actually like that because they're, it's, it's a healthier environment to be more open and real rather than always scripted and careful. And I've worked right. in both types of corporations and the kind where they're scripted and careful, they're very secretive and you never know what's going on and you feel it's icky working there. I prefer anyone... people to be a little bit more real and therefore make mistakes. And, the, and, then the, and then at the end of the day, you say, what did they do? You know, I've had people I've worked with or slash for who 90% of what they say is kind of crazy, kind of out there, but they have a certain method and a certain vision. And at the end of the day, what do they do? Did they fire everybody in the company because they were mad or in a bad mood? No, they didn't do that because at the end of the day, they didn't take that action. They expressed it. They expressed their frustration. Right. They ranted. They're a little off, but they know they need good people around them to this sort of protect why, them from themselves. This is why the, women have girlfriends, so that you can call and bitch and vent 
and they don't really take you very seriously. They empathize, they sympathize. And I find that if I, if I vent to, you know, Mark, he's like, oh my God, she's really upset. She's losing it. She's, you know, this is horrible. Like he takes it more literally. Yeah. And he can't, and I'm like, I'm just trying to vent here. Yeah, I'm venting. I am under a lot of pressure, yeah. under a lot of stress. I just need people to vent it out at me. and be like ridiculous and say, I hate these people. I hate my brother or whatever. You know, like, ah, I fucking hate him. Yeah, or, you know, like so and so just, you know, dropped a bomb on, on someone somewhere. Why can't we just kill everyone? Yeah. You know, how many, I would love to have that conversation. Can we just, can we just annihilate Iran? Just let's get, let's get this over with. No, we can't do that because of this, that, and the other thing. Okay. And is anyone surprised by this? You know, oh, shocker, Trump's impetuous. What? (laughs) What? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I thought he was reading, you know, foreign policy manuals in, you know, the corner of the Oval Office. Yeah, that's the guy that we thought was elected. Shock that it's not, it's not that guy. Okay. Let me read some more of this stuff though, because, all right. So here's how this op-ed starts. And I just want you to think about this. This is not the writing of somebody who's ever in support of the president or any kind of agenda. Like the the supposed vibe of this article is supposed to be, oh, this guy's inside the Trump administration trying to keep everything on an even keel. He's trying to save America, right? That's not, you don't write an anonymous op-ed if that's your role and you just exposed yourself. And you just caused Trump to become nervous and suspicious of everybody who works for him? Yeah, what's the point of it? The point of this is to is to sow discord in the White House. Yeah. There's no question in my mind that's the point of this. The point of this is to be- make Trump suspicious. Tr- totally. Because if you were if you were truly if the agenda was the purported agenda of this op-ed, you wouldn't say anything. You would that's just right. do it. That's right. You wouldn't say anything. You would just keep doing it. The fact that this is out means that the point is that he's trying to thwart the agenda further by creating discord within the White House. I want everyone to know that Trump's crazy. That's really what this is. And there's a group of us that work for him that think so. Yeah. Why, why would you do that? I mean, yeah. seriously, right. if you really believed, hey, we got to keep the country together. Well, you know, Trump's not going anywhere for at least two years. So you need to secretly just keep doing what you're doing. Like, let's say this was true president's completely off the rails and he's one day he might nuke Korea or something like this is really going on. First of all, I would go to the cabinet and try and do the 25th amendment. Like we got to get rid of this guy and I'd go public. Hey, I've been there. I've been in the office. This guy's completely right. insane. You know, Here's okay. evidence so, or whatever. Th- I've gathered some th- evidence. Okay. Yeah. I want to read this though. Okay. President, this is how it starts. President. And this reads like a leftist to me. President Trump is facing, because it's propaganda, President Trump is facing a test to his presidency unlike any faced by a modern American leader. So they're already setting up like, you know, we have this serious situation. It's not just that the special counsel looms large or that the country is bitterly divided over Mr. Trump's leadership, or even that his party might well lose the House to an opposition hell-bent on his downfall. Like, this sounds like a leftist writing this to me. Yeah. The dilemma, which he does not fully grasp, is that many of the senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate his agenda and his worst inclinations. I know I'm one of them. Okay. First of all, talking about, oh, the House is going to lose. Everybody's divided over Trump. Like, these are all leftist talking points. Well, it sounds like every administration ever. I mean, is there any administration, political administration, where they're not people that don't disagree vehemently with the president or with the leadership? Or is there any business where 100 percent of the people absolutely love what the CEO is doing? Right. Of course not. Right. No, no, you're, 50% and to your point, of the people should hate him. To your earlier point, like it is part of the job to to um frustrate, I, I hate to use that word, to temper and some, you know, wild inclinations of a CEO. Anyway, that's okay. We've already been through that. So I just want to keep going here though. To be clear, ours is not the popular resistance of the left. We want the administration to succeed and think that many of its policies have already made America safer and more prosperous. Okay. Now I'm going to throw the Republicans a little bone here. Um, oh, I'm not a leftist. I want them to succeed. Oh, really? If you did, you wouldn't have written this. 
you actually want to create drama and discord within the White House. Right. We believe our first duty is to this country, and the president continues to act in a manner that is detrimental to the health of our republic. Okay, so come clean. What is it then? What did he do? What did he do? Come clean. Come out. Tell come us. out in the open. Tell us who you are. Oh, I'm the senior tour guide, and I've just, you know. I want I, an example. <laughs> like, you're saying detrimental to America. What? Is his immigration policy, or is it his policy on North Korea? Or, like, what? what is the, Like, if he's in there, like, um, you know, selling selling our military secrets to Iran or something, that's detrimental. If you just disagree with him on policy, that's not detrimental. Well, and People that's put the him there for thing. a reason. The rest of this, it's like a lot of it is just policy disagreement. It's not actually, you know, so he's trying to thwart a policy that he disagrees with, that he or she disagrees with. And this is a democratically elected president, and they're trying to thwart policy that they don't agree with. That's a fucking, that is treason. That's a coup. That's I mean, a coup. The people elected him based on what he said he was going to do. They yeah. want, that's the agenda that's they the want. That's the agenda so, we want. So Now, if he's crazy, like we said, you know, like he's like slobbering over himself, that's totally different. Yeah. But that's not, that doesn't seem to be what this person's no. saying, nor do they provide any evidence of that. No, and here's, okay, next line. That is why many Trump appointees have vowed to do what we can to preserve our democratic institutions while thwarting Mr. Oh, Trump's please. more misguided impulses until he's out of office. Oh, very democratic of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm glad uh, that irony. you guys are there. You you lovely democratic champions are there to put your authoritarian stamp on everything. Get the secret, fuck out. Your secret non transparent cabal yeah. that secretly <laughs> undemocratically uh perpetrated a coup on the country in order to preserve democracy. Thank you. Yeah. The root of the problem is the president's amorality. <laughs> Although he was elected as a Republican, the president shows little affinity for the ideals long espouted by conservatives. Yeah, like George Bush. <laughs> yeah, he's not George Bush. Thank God. Um, at best, he has invoked these ideals in scripted settings. At worst, he has attacked them outright. Yeah. That's how he got in office. Right. Right. In addition to his mass mar so this is what I'm thinking. Either you're a John McCain type or you're a lefty because only those people would actually find it, have a problem with this. You know what's another quick irony here, though, too, is this amorality idea. Aren't we always told that the real danger is an ideologue, someone who's wedded to a certain position <clears throat> and can't compromise? Well, if you're Obama, and though, that's okay. Right. If you, as long as you have the right politics, right. right. No, but now we have about... an amoral guy who just wants to quote unquote be pragmatic. Yeah. Actually, which... he's immoral. He wants to rip children from their mothers at the border. It's very mm -hmm. immoral. Yeah. In addition to his mass marketing of the notion that the press is the enemy of the people. Okay, that's a leftist propaganda talking point. Yeah. In addition to his mass marketing of the notion that the press is the enemy of the people, President Trump's impulses are generally anti-trade and anti-democratic. Again, with just the conclusions. You know, this reads like a leftist, you but, know, paper. It really does. So, so anti-trade, I mean, have we watched this guy for two years? All he talked about was unfair trade agreements. Of course we know that... Anyone who voted for him, that was probably why they voted for him. Yeah. He talked about NAFTA and unfair trade agreements. Now, That's you may disagree wanted, with that. So and I disagree shut your with face. Him on a, <laughs> I disagree with him on a lot of that. Right. Um, but the fa that's not a shock. Right. Really? He's, right. Or that, remember when Obama said, boy, I wish we didn't have a Congress. I wish I could just kind of do this stuff unilaterally. And then he's passed more executive orders than any president in history yeah. and bypassed Congress. Was that anti-Democrat? Yeah, I remember Every that. Every president in history <laughs> says, God, how do we just get my agenda done yeah. without having to deal with this? I mean, this is so stupid. It is stupid. So it goes on from there. Um, you know, we don't need to get into much more, but basically the whole thing is bullshit. <laughs> so I'm like... The purpose of it was to make Trump nervous. I think it. I think it succeeded. Um, he tweeted this morning some stuff. He's he's like you know New York Times. This person should be revealed. And I agree. I think the person has probably done something illegal here. They they're at least they're saying we are doing things illegal behind the scenes. And and the New York Times knows who it is. And it's a pretty high crime, if you're at the president's 
elbow doing illegal, you know, trying to thwart his agenda. That's a high crime I, of some I don't kind. Know. I don't know if it is. I mean, I'm confused by the whole thing because in any administration where you have, you know, let's say you have your advisor, you know, you have your your main guy, um, your pre- chief of staff, and you've got a bunch of underlings, you've got all these people arguing all the time over what you should do. So they're trying to thwart them. What does that mean? They just, yeah. you know, okay, he wants... He wants to cut taxes by, you know, 30 percent and they say no, 25. So they're thwarting his agenda. They're just making their voices heard. What's wrong with that? That's not I mean, now, if they're like secretly walking into his office and like, you know, forging a signature on executive orders or something, is that what they mean by thwarting his agenda? Or do they mean they're just opposing what he wants to do? I I don't even get this. I don't understand it. What's the point of this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he just goes on saying stuff like he's erratic. Any successes that you're seeing in his presidency aren't because of him. It's because of the people who work for him. And he, and it's in spite of him. Um, it, right. It, it, the whole thing reads just like that, you know. That means that he's got good people around him. You know, like if you're, again, going to, you know, Reagan or anyone, you know, if you've got a good speechwriter and you've got a good chief of staff and you have good middle management and you've brought in good people, there's a lot of bad leaders that have good people around them that succeed. You know, that's part of the administration that he brought. This is so insane. Like this whole thing is insane to me that this is happening. Um, I, I know people hate Trump and I, but this is crazy <laughs> stuff. Like we literally are in crazy town here with this stuff. Yeah. I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't believe this letter. Maybe the guy works there, but I don't believe that he's really, I mean, I guess he's an ideologue behind the scenes trying to push an agenda that isn't Trump's. That's what this, that's what's happening. And some of the statements that are made in this letter, it's pretty clear to me that he has, the person who wrote this pretty much agrees with the leftist propaganda talking points out there about most everything. Um, so it really does sound like a John McCain type, like a neocon, uh, who, who agrees with the Democrats, but likes tax cuts, you know, oh yeah, we got these great tax cuts, but that's in (laughs) spite of Trump, not because of them. Right. Yeah. I don't even understand what this, and he sounds like he's, he's pushing a conservative agenda. So how is that in the interest of the New York times? They're basically saying like, this is some sort of libertarian conservative that's pushing back on Trump's like uh, populism, like that's not what the left wants. So I, I don't get this. I'm just completely confused by this. Yeah. And then, of course, the last little thing is he quotes Senator John McCain. put it, oh, Senator gross. John McCain put it best in his farewell letter. All uh, Americans should heed his words and break free of the tribalism trap. What are you doing, you dick? Like you're just actually making it worse. And you know it. It's only tribalism when we're doing it, like when the when the real right is doing it. When the mm-hmm. left is doing it, it's just being, you know, good, you know, supportive of the democracy. Yeah, they're, yep, they're acting in America's interest. We may no longer have Senator McCain, but we will always have his example, a lodestar uh, for restoring honor to public life in our national dialogue. Gross. Are you fucking kidding Vomits. me? Vomits. Okay, so that's the nature of the person who wrote this letter. I just want you all to know that. I think we can disc- discount it completely. And I hope Trump doesn't take it too seriously. I hope they find out who wrote it and fire him. Actually, first they should interrogate him and find out who else is working with him and then fire him. I'm thinking waterboarding, but I think that might be illegal. <clears throat> all right. I'm not really mad at the guy. I just think it's stupid. I mean, I don't I don't I it sounds to me like um, the the supposed purpose of this is really mysterious. It's more like you just said. It's just to discredit Trump and undermine him. Yeah. There's no it's, real. It's purpose further to undermining it. of the administ- the administration's ability to function. Mm-hmm. The the lot the Mueller uh, witch hunt, which is absolutely what it is. Look, I'm not a Trump apologist. I you know it's so funny because I I started out this whole thing back in the primary. I was a Ted Cruz person. I did not like Trump. I was a critic of his, but I feel like I'm constantly defending him because this stuff is crazy. It's crazy. It's wrong. And yeah, 
Yeah, the more they come after him, the more dug in I get, and I think yeah. the more dug in his base gets. Some a friend of mine said today that he thinks Trump wrote this letter <laughs> because you know, it's, it's genius. Gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna. <laughs> that's jack some four up his D tra- chess right and there. Then, that's five. That's six D chess. Yeah, because now he thinks everyone's after him, and we got you know. <laughs> oh my God, I would love that. I would love if that were true because I think trolling the New York Times that way would be just hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, he's not that smart. I think if he was that smart, that's something he, that's something You know that who's that smart, should... though? Stephen Miller. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God. Especially that ending with the, oh, John McCain's the greatest. That's almost smacks of like, is this parody? <laughs> it does, right? Like only the New York Oh, my Times God, Doug. Be... It's Stephen Miller. <laughs> I could be. It totally, it totally could, be. could be Stephen Miller. And he and Trump right now are laughing their asses off. Because I, who would write that? And if only only like a, a New York Times, like died in the wool kind of leftist could believe that someone could write that. Because <laughs> that is so true. And that's like, I'm reading it and I'm going, this is not a Republican. This isn't a, like this reads like a, notice- a progressive wrote this. Because at the beginning, it says something about, like, free minds and free markets. Yeah. Like, it's kind of a libertarian canard, you know? And then at the end, they're quoting John McCain and the right. honor. It almost sounds like someone trolled them. Yeah. Like, okay, I, let's, like, create this fake conservative kind of person. I like that And we'll theory. throw a bunch of buzzwords okay. in. Okay. So I like that theory a lot. I, I think that it's so almost it's so fake that... I don't, yeah, I, that's that's a definite possibility. I'm thinking it could be a troll. Wow. Okay. I like that idea. I'm going to stick with that. I hope it is because the alternative is that it does actually cause more problems for Trump. He has some really great people working for him. There's some great things on his agenda. And I would hate to see that thwarted because they've made him suspicious of people who are good people. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's turn to the Kavanaugh hearings because that's the other news yeah. item. We'll wrap up with that. This is great. I mean, we know these hearings, the by the picture. way. These hearings are just a formality because nobody needs to convince anybody. It's a red shirt, blue shirt vote, mm-hmm. and he's going to get in. So it really is just theater, and the left is really taking that um, seriously. <laughs> mm-hmm. They showed up with... I think there were over 70 people were arrested at this protest at the Kavanaugh hearings. I don't know how many got in the room, but anyway, Linda Sarsour is among them. God. If whatever Linda Blood Sarsour boil. hates has to be good. Yeah, just that's if you want a guide for life. Yeah. Just do, do the, the opposite. opposite of Linda Sarsour. <laughs> Just George Costanza, do the opposite, Linda Sorsour. That's all you need. Throw away all your books on philosophy and self-help. Yeah. So if you tune in live to some of these leftist uh, live stream videos of the protest, you've got these hippies, these old, I mean, they're the old white female hippies singing, holding hands and swaying, we're going to stop this hearing now. <laughs> we're going to stop this hearing now. Come on. They I'm were not, not singing that. Yeah, they were. I'm. Not, that's totally true. Can you sing that again real quick? I kind of like that. We're like going to stop this <laughs> hearing now. Kumbaya, wow. my lord. Ooh. So... They're basically like here's here's what I want to talk about, and you and you kind of started talking about this earlier. When did our lives? When did this start with these activists and like this being the way that you do things in this country? I hate these people. I don't the idea that this is how you do things in America. That you get out with your signs. That you show up in a mob. Mm-hmm. That you sway and sing and i mean it's like the 60s activists in charge of of everything here and then there's some evidence that some of these people were paid i guess there's pictures of some of these activists getting paid oh well this is all coordinated the democratic uh you saw you know what they did in the before grassley could even introduce the guy they started interrupting him and calling for adjournment there was a conference call i guess where they 
you know, this was all scripted. Uh, this was all scripted because they're virtue signaling their base. I mean, they know he's going to get nominated, right. but their base is want some red meat. So they, they want to go in there and try and show that they're, they're fighting. They're doing everything they can, you know, to fight, to fight against us, including today, Cory Booker, the Senator um, announced that he was knowingly going to violate Senate rules by releasing some emails that were committee confidential, even though the emails got released later anyways. Um, but, you know, he completely violated Senate rules, knowing that he could get thrown out of the Senate. Wow. Um, which what a is bold, courageous man. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's trying to signal. And they kept delaying it and interrupting it, right, all the Democrats? Oh, of course, yeah. They, they wanted adjournment. They wouldn't even let him be introduced. So um, what were they you know, doing exactly? Remember, they were claiming that uh, there was 42,000 documents they were claiming that had only been released to them the night before. So as soon as Grassley started the committee hearing, he said, I want to introduce, you know, welcome everybody, Senator, Senator, Senator. They started in interrupting, and he wouldn't recognize them because they were out of order. But anyways, the point was that they were claiming that it was a, a quote, charade and mockery, unquote, because they hadn't gotten these documents and they were, so they couldn't properly prepare to, you know, for this, for this hearing. Yeah, they've known he's uh, coming. And these documents, by the way, are just, are just documents of, of cases he's tried and his no, opinions. No, they're not. No, they're, they're not. not. What are they? No, because every case and everything he's ever tried is a matter of public record. They had months to study everything this guy's ever written. He's written like several hundred opinions, right? So everything you want to know about his view of the law is out there. What this was, was when he was a um, uh, uh, in the Bush administration, I think he was uh, an attorney within the Bush administration, the Department of Justice or something, prosecutor, whatever. He had written various emails. And so they wanted all the documents related to his, anything that he had ever touched or written about as it related to his job when he was, you know, within the Bush administration. And, but anything he's written related to, you know, cases is obviously a matter of public record. And they refused to meet with him. All of them already announced they're not voting for him, as if they need to review these documents anyways, when they've already decided they're not going to vote for him. Right, right. So they're not going to vote was, for him. It was just all theater. Yeah. You know, they, were, they, they wanted some pretext to object. And that was it. And it was completely preposterous. Now, keep in mind, these are the same people that jammed the 1,200-page Obamacare bill down our throat. Right. You know, destroying our medical system. Destroying it. You know, in 24 hours without anyone having a chance to read or debate it. But, you know, they need the documents on, you know, on this guy who's a uh, basketball coach. It's just completely, it's, it's like you said, it's just kabuki theater. It's ridiculous. The funniest thing... You got, I'm just, just trying to find it. It's not related to the Kavanaugh hearing, but the, uh, you know, also going on in Congress this week is that they're talking to the Twitter CEO. Mm -hmm. And there are protesters at that. And the funniest thing, you've got to Google this, uh, and all of you listeners, because it's really hilarious. And actually, I will share it on my Facebook page. Um, as soon as we're done recording here, I'm going to put that on there. So... This protester, again, it's with this like this tactic of just being jerks, you know, interrupting things, inappropriate. It's the kneeling at the anthem at the NFL and saying, I'm going to shove myself down your throat. They're mm -hmm. all the Westboro Baptist Church. The left is the Westboro Baptist Church. I'm so sick of these people mm -hmm. in my life. Anyway, how to handle them? This woman gets up and starts screaming at, during the, the Jack Dorsey C, Twitter CEO hearing. She starts, you know, blah, 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 doing her agenda, whatever it is. And it's probably not even related to Twitter. It's probably like, here's my chance to I'm say sure she something. Had something very, a very cogent. Uh, yeah. I'm, sh I'm, I'm so, sure she had. <laughs> so the, the chairman's like pounding on like, you know, hey, you know. Please leave, ma'am. Please leave. And she's still yelling. She won't leave. He's pounding. And then he just launches into auctioneering language. And I'll get him five hundred, five hundred, ten, and the. Can I get fifteen? Blah, blah, blah. Who, Dorsey? <laughs> no, the the congressman. I was just kidding. The congressman Wait, doing... started doing this auctioneering thing over her screeching, 
It was the funniest. <laughs> I it didn't see that. So funny. <laughs> and everybody started laughing. Oh so my he God. did it as a joke. He I did mean, it as he a was joke. Clearly, just to try and. He, awesome. But he drowned her. He drowned her out completely. Brilliant. Yeah, it was brilliant, and everybody started laughing. And to me, that was like, okay, that's totally the way to handle them because it just totally mar- it it shut her up. It made fun of the situation. Not so much. It wasn't mean spirited, but it shut her down and it made everyone laugh at her. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, you're right. It was really good. Yeah, I'll post that, that to my page. So go check out Sunny Loman at Facebook. You can see that later. But is it the big picture? Like, I mean, I don't know how much more you want to get into that, but I mean, is it the big picture just this complete pattern of lawlessness? Yeah, and right. That the left is displaying where, you know, clearly the premise is that this this is not just, you know, policy disagreements in an otherwise civil society. This is, you know, we're on the brink, you know, Hitler's in office, and now we have to take extra legal, uh, extraordinary steps to, you know, for this, this resistance. Well, they're um, only lawless when their guy's not in power. So when their guy's in power, they actually like law. They like a yeah, lot of law. Of course. Well, that's what they, they want a huge government, right? So, so they what want they are is law. they're trying to tear down our society, fundamentally transform America. No borders, Antifa roaming the streets, enforcing their SJW agenda. You know, anything America, if you support America, if you just like America, you're a Trump supporter. You deserve to be beaten up. You're a Nazi if you fly the American flag. Yep. Yeah, we can't just disagree with you. Um, uh, uh, We're all under the same flag, but we just have a disagreement. If you are against our agenda, our SGJW agenda, in any way, shape, or form, you are an enemy that deserves to be beaten right. and called out and harassed and intimidated well, you know that and threatened. One, there was that one leftist who went to the protest with an American flag. And he's like, I'm an American, but I'm a leftist. And I'm going to, you know, I mean, I think in some ways the idea is that you, you fly this flag and you show, hey, Americans are opposed to whatever too, you know, that we're on the left, but we're Americans. And he got punched and his flag got torn away from it, you know, cause you can't have the flag on the left. It's amazing. You can't love America. See, well, this is good in, a, in the sense that, you know, it's sad and tragic that there are people out there that have been, had this anti-American propaganda inculcated into them through their educational system and, you know, whatever. But, the, I guess the good news is that America was never really, great. America was never great. Themselves. I yeah. mean, this is this is really what the left is. It's not, you know, this this pretense that they're about, you know, the law or something like that was, like you said, it's it, the ends justifies the means. When they're in power, and of course that's what they seek is power. Then it'll be all about the law. Remember before when they thought Hillary was going to win, they were castigating Trump for questioning the legitimacy of the election. Right. Remember he was saying, hey, you know, this, I don't know, this election might be rigged. Uh, these people right. are doing it. Oh, and, and, and they, they love the FBI now that the FBI is trying to take down Trump. Oh, and the CIA. Yeah. Who was their bogeyman, rightfully so, was the bogeyman for 50 years. Um, now they love the intelligence agencies. They never lie. Yeah. How it's dare people- you impugn the uh, the hard... <laughs> the, the, Morality yeah. and hard work of these fine officers of the law. Oh, don't look at my pig socks. <laughs> Those are just, you know, the local cops are the ones that are the pigs. The feds are the good guys. Yeah, the CIA is fantastic. It's just the the traffic stop guys that are the pigs. Yeah. The, the guy um, who lives in your neighborhood is the pig. <laughs> The guy Isn't who actually amazing? protects your your street is the pig. So you know there is there is this escalating you know because they're they're obviously and that's the big picture danger is the idea that and this is what will lead to civil war. I mean if they're yeah, going exactly. to if they're going to conflate 
you know, any sort of like pro-American, pro-American ideals um, with Nazism or fascism, which has been a canard of the left, you know, for a hundred years, but now they're actually taking it seriously. That if you are an American and believe in, you know, the American Constitution, that you are evil, you're part of the problem that needs to be resisted, then, you know, that's that's going to lead to civil war because there's no answer to that. I mean, if we can't disagree within the parameters of civil society and within the institutions that we have, you know, the federal government, the Congress, the courts, you know, if we're going to go beyond that and start breaking rules, not just in a small way, you know, it starts small and now it's getting big, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's one thing, hey, they're shouting down speakers and people like us say, hey, in principle, you know, if they're going to shout down speakers, they're telling you they don't want you to hear competing opinions. Well, why wouldn't they be for uh, a coup? Why wouldn't they be for overthrowing the First Amendment? I mean, in principle, they're, when someone shouts down a speaker, they're saying, we don't want you to hear these words. You right. can't be allowed to hear these words. We're going to stop these words from impinging on your mind. Um, oh, no, Doug, you have it wrong. It's the right that's against the First Amendment because Trump said CNN is fake news. <laughs> oh. I mean, literally, that's like all they've got. And on our side, we can say, well, you're not letting anybody speak on campuses that, you know, without without $600,000 600, worth of security. Yeah, they'll and burn the campus down if a conservative comes. But how Trump how says, many speakers has that chilled? I mean, Ben Shapiro can kind of deal with that. He's got fans big following, but how many regular speakers has that actually chilled? And how many students has that chilled from talking about what they be- really truly think? Yeah, you Or can't starting a, a club, you know, trying to find other like-minded kids, because these days you get beat up, you get harassed. And part of the problem is that in these cities we have leftist uh, politicians in charge, so they don't actually allow the police to police Antifa. No, it's asymmetric policing where, you know, if they're sympathetic to the political goals of these protesters, they let them go. Right. They don't enforce the law. Right. And it's that way, too, with, like, Hillary not being arrested for her crimes. We're now in a society where if you're on the left, you can get away with crime, especially against the right. And if you're on the right, you can't get away with farting. Yes. And it's like that in the UK, and it's like Tommy Robinson was arrested for, you know, doing what everybody does, but he was arrested because he doesn't have the right ideas. And and Muslims can spit on protesters and do whatever they want in in the UK, and they can they can rape girls and not be held accountable because we don't want to be racist. But Mm -hmm. Tommy Robinson goes to jail for standing across the street from a courthouse and filming himself. So that the law there is being applied unequally, and that's what causes the outrage, and that's happening here, and I think that's why there's more anger. That's why you end up with, um, you end up, I don't think Trump is this guy anymore. I don't think he's the strong man leader that everybody, you know, the authoritarian. I don't really get that from him. I mean, maybe he, he'd do more if he could get away with it, but he really can't. There are a lot of checks and balances on him, especially culturally. Right. But eventually we're going to get that guy. We're going to get the the military general strongman type of guy who, because if we cannot count on the law being applied equally, that is where we're headed. I mean, this is really kind of scary. I try not to think about it too much. And I, I think the way to save it is you really have to, we have to marginalize these, um, radical, the radical left. And I'm really hoping that you know, black people, black Americans join the right. Yeah. You are seeing some of that for sure. Yeah. I Um, mean, we've got to have more, more all these incidents like taken out of context. Oh, you know, they did this or someone did that or this event occurred. But when you look at the pattern and you look at it in full context of like all the stuff going on, that's the takeaway. It's lawlessness. It's, these people are beyond the law. They're right. beyond good and evil. Their agenda is right, is morally right. They have the moral high ground, so they can do whatever they want. And we're going to have a two-tiered system of justice Yeah. where the laws that don't apply to, that's to the what's, right. That's but, already happening. 
That's that already happening. happening. That's real. So. And then it happened at the highest levels with this Mueller right. Hillary thing. Right, exactly. So, you know, these small little things, you know, the shouting down of the speakers and the, you know, you see these trends on campuses in a very small ways, and then you start to see it in government and law and federal government, and you start to see it everywhere. Well, and, and under Obama, every- you know, with him, the IRS wasn't held accountable. Uh, Lois Lerner wasn't held accountable. Um, right. You know, there were all of these horrible scandals. No, they got swept under the rug. And how long is it going to be before, okay, well, you know, if Trump's illegitimate, you know, Robert Reich, that guy that came out and said the entire Trump presidency should be annulled. Yeah. You, Robert Reich which, is the former labor secretary under Clinton, and he's a leftist activist, basically. Yeah, he's a professor, and he's a horrible human being. He's a horrible and person. I think he has one, short man syndrome. Oh, no he question. He hates people. Question. But, you know, he comes out and basically said, I mean, how far of a step is it from people at the highest levels? These are former members, cabinet officials of an administration. Right. Who are telling us a president should be annulled, like liquidated and purged from history. Yeah. And the kind of stuff now we're seeing in he the wanted, Senate. By, by annulled, he wanted Trump out and every single thing he did basically Un, like annulled, like a undone. do-over, undone immediately. Like a like a Congress would pass a law or something that said everything Trump <laughs> did is just not not it's gone, it's reversed. And, you know, and one so, paragraph law reversing everything Trump did. So if that's true, then his Supreme and by the Court way, he tried justices, to back that up with with the Constitution. Oh God. Yeah. But you know, at what point are they going to say, well, we don't have to obey the Supreme Court because these were illegitimately. Uh, nominated and appointed justices, so we're not going to listen to the Supreme Court anymore. I mean, they only obey the law when it when it suits them, and so you know we're we're a few steps away from that, I think. Yeah. You know, where these people are going to just—they're already taking the law into their own hands. Yeah, they already do what they want. I thought Obama did what he wanted, pretty much. You know, sure. I was afraid he was going to do more. I guess he really couldn't get away with more, but um, he pretty much did what he wanted. All right, we are. I've been kind of lazy about keeping us on track. We're 12 minutes over, so <laughs> I think we got to end there. I think we end on a negative, uh, negative uh, line a little too much. Maybe we should start doing the jokes at the end. Yeah, well, yeah, or maybe we, what's the positive? Do you have any positives you want to take away? I think there's some positives. Okay, what are the positives? Just that they're they're more they're revealed for who they are. There's the walk away movement. The the uh, black people are joining. The right is turning out to be liberal. Like the right is the liberals. Yeah, so right. if, if you're for free speech, if you're for self responsibility, if you're for judging people as individuals and not by the color of their skin, you're on the right. That's who you are these days. Because I mean, you're not on the left. The left is racist. They are. Um, they're not democratic. They don't care about the individual. They're collectivists. So now you do that's have right. some people on the right like that, but um, overwhelmingly the left is that way. No, and, that's, and they're that's lawless, the two parties now. So. That's the two parties. Yeah, that's the two parties. And and so I think that's good. And I think there's a huge silent majority in this country that's witnessing this. Right. I, I you know I think there's going to be a huge backlash. This midterm I think these, is going to be really interesting. Yeah, this is huge. Yeah. I think. We absolutely have to keep the Democrats. We have to keep these psychos out, out of power until the Democrats stop being psychos. They imagine Nancy in their Pelosi. leadership. They have voted some really nasty folks. Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris. These people are the next kind of Democrat. Yeah, the Bernie Sanders. They're nasty. Socialists. And the Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, the you know pure socialists. Who's that redheaded actress chick who's running in New York? I mean, everybody coming up, they're really nasty, socialist, communist, um, by any means necessary kind of people. Yeah, and they're explicit and about either it. those people have to get out of the Democrat Party, they have to be pushed out, but I'm seeing the reverse. I'm seeing that... that no, the far left's winning. They're yeah, pushing out the right. old guard. They're pushing out the could... old guard. So maybe there will be a third party at some point that kind of encapsulates more of a liberal slash libertarian style of of but anyway right now it's still republicans and democrats and 
we'll see what happens this midterm. But by any means necessary, we need to keep those psychos out of office because they will lord over us. We're going to be in camps if they have their way. Okay, how did I turn that negative again? Yeah, we just can't help it. <laughs> all right. It's all I think good. we're going to have to end with jokes next next week. All right. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us. That's it for our show today. It was a fun, gossipy, juicy week, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the House of Sunny podcast. Go check out Sunny on YouTube at her channel, House of Sunny. Everything Sunny does is fan funded. And because she's likely to get kicked off and demonetized on every platform at some point, please support her over at patreon.com slash house of Sunny. Become one of Sunny's elite squad and have access to behind the scenes footage, t-shirts, special events, and more. Uh.